Hello again, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about axonal guidance. So I guess one of the principles to first look at with axons is axons like to kind of um, go together in a sense where, you know, different axons will fire, follow uh, each other. So that can kind of lead to um, a certain guidance of how axons will move throughout but what's crucial is that axons follow, you know, a specific pathway and specific pathways in the ventral nerve cord. So what we see is, you know, there's very, there's a very amount of proteins that um, can be associated with axonal guidance and a lot of nerves that, um, you know, that help to um, mediate this process. So axons will kind of um, guide themselves along a midline. And this uh, midline, there's a lot of varying factors that control, you know, how the um, axons will kind of control themselves um, and um, use this midline as a, a mode of uh, directionality and um, guidance instead. So there's different proteins such as slit and netrin that are, you know, at the uh, actual midline that can kind of um, control, uh, you know, what will happen to the um, uh axons and how they'll move and then there's also you know uh, roundabout which is actually a robo which is actually you know a receptor for slit and then there's also different um uh there's different neurons known as commissurous neurons that actually you know go through the midline as well and they kind of um help to mediate this process and what it's interesting to know is commissurous um is actually a protein that down regulates robo so now to just, you know, look at this, um, this picture here, you know, we see that when, when you go, when you go somewhere, you need like a specific direction to, um, complete your destination, but you need help, you need directions, right? So neurons need that directionality as well. So this directionality can be mediated, like I said previously, by these, you know, slit and nectrin. So if we look at the picture with slit and nectrin, so originally this, this, uh, these commissural neurons are attracted by this protein known as nectrin, and it's originally insensitive to the slit. But as you go closer and closer to the midline, the slit is highly concentrated. And what slit does is slit is a repulsion um, protein that repels the neurons away from the midline. So once you get to the midline, the slit will eventually silence the nectrin, and this will lead to the um, commissurless neurons going through the midline. And over time, this, as it goes, keep going further and further from the midline, this will lead to a lower concentration of slit and higher concentration of nectrin. So what happened is it will be eventually um, repelled by the uh, slit and it's going to be insensitive to the um, nectrin. This will lead to a curvature. So what's also interesting to highlight is that slit is actually, sl slit with its binding of robo will actually um, lead to the silencing of nectrin as uh, slit and um, robo, what happens is that they um, they bind to the DCC, which is the thing that that is binded to nectrin. And when they these two complexes bind together, the slit and robo will actually win out, and this will lead to that repulsion being dominated. So this is just an overview of how slit and nectrin, along with axonal guidance, occurs, and how you know axons kind of move with each other to along the midline to um, eventually um, lead to the um, neuron um, complex that we have in our brain. Thank you.